Greetings, my friends. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. And today I'm going to be talking about why it is important to begin with well-defined concepts and also, also why it is important to study the elements. Okay, so the reason one has to study the elements is that all our knowledge of mathematics uh, was first stated in the elements uh, in, in a systematic way. So without further ado, I only have about 15 minutes, so let me begin. Now, the, first, uh, the very first translation was the one done by Heiberg. And, and it was, uh, again, uh, re-edited and provided with a modern English translation by Richard Fitzpatrick. Okay, and so, and so in, in this book here, in the introduction, uh, Fitzpatrick calls, calls the requirements or claims axioms. Okay, so he says... Without any foundation, he says that they necessarily follow from five axioms. Now, nowhere in the original text does it talk about axioms. Okay, and you'll see now the original text is given on the left and English on the right. So now, here's where it begins. Okay, etimata is translated as postulates. So the word that really got to me is this word here. I never knew what that meant, and that's ancient Greek. And so, of course, I understood it correctly because, you know, of, of my powerful knowledge in mathematics and the very fact that I think like my ancestors think, okay? And so, uh, what, does, what does this word mean? It's, it's an ancient Greek word. Now, I'll explain to you what it means in a moment, but first I want to tell you that I wrote to a Greek uh, learned man, and he revealed the following to me. Okay, so he said to me, Kalispera agapite John Gabriel. That means uh, good afternoon or good evening, John Gabriel. Stastichia tu esclido, echume tapende etimata. And he puts that in angle brackets, pu se simerini apodosi legunde axiomata. Let me translate it. It says, in the elements of Euclid, we have the five claims or requirements, which in today's uh, language are translated as axioms. Okay. Now, epicis iparhun ke ienea kine enia enia. Okay, that means uh, also there exist the nine common notions. Aftes i decateseris protasis, then apodignunde stastichia tu evclidi. This is interesting. These 14 claims, I shouldn't have done that, uh, are not shown in the book of Euclid. So I don't know where they're shown, but he obviously has knowledge that I don't have. In any case, he says, <coughs> e kine enoe, then de apodixi. And he says the common notions do not need proof. Kathoti prokiptun apotin logiki, because they are uh, understandable from logic. So the common notions are understandable from logic. Almost aetimata ine kata capio tropo af theretas. Okay, so. Uh, he says, but the uh, the requirements are uh, in a certain manner. Uh, they're 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 called for. The word atheritas. I shouldn't have done that again. Let me just go to my go to my translation here. And if we see that word atheritas. Uh, here it is. Uh, so if we take this word here and we look up the meaning in Greek, we'll see that uh, 
that it means arbitrary, okay? So, so what he's saying is that, that, uh, these are by some manner arbitrary, uh, claims. Ke yafto o efklidis zita kani etima naishun. And this is why, uh, Euclid asks or makes a, a request for these claims to apply. Now, I'll tell you something very quickly. You know, Euclid was very meticulous and very systematic. And if there was a need for these uh, requirements to be proved from nothing, he would have done so because that was the whole purpose of the uh, Book of Elements. Remember that before the Greeks, uh, even the Babylonians and others had some notions of geometry and also some notions of logic, but they never had any systematic proofs or anything like that. So it would seem it would be completely out of order for him to state it unless, get this, unless the ancient Greeks didn't think anything of these. And why didn't they think anything of these? Because they were easy to prove. And guess what? I proved these five requirements from nothing. And you can watch my videos and I'll put uh, comments in the details section. And I'll also tell you that in my free ebook, there's a whole chapter showing you how you can derive all of these requirements from nothing. So they're definitely not axioms. Okay, that's been a big misunderstanding. And the people, the academics who came before me were actually not able to figure out how these could be derived from nothing. But if you read my book and watch my videos, you will understand. So it carries on and it says, It is so, puanaferete miafora, uh, this word, it is so, which is uh, published one time only, ala enoite pende. Uh, but has, but appears in five uh, meanings, okay? So in other words, when you look at the elements, when you look at the elements like this, it says it is so, and then it's got and, 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 and. That Greek word is ke. So in, in fact, this it is so applies to all these requirements, not just the first one, okay? So... So this is his response, and he says, Yati pai kestapede etimata mesotuke. And what I've just explained to you, it's applied because it goes to the five requirements through the use of and. Puksekinun talipa tessera, which of course the four uh, subsequent claims follow from the first. So it is so grammaticos in a paratatikos chronos prostatiki. Messi, pathetiki for me to tell. Okay, so now th this here simply is saying that it's in uh, a, an imperfect uh, voice. I mean, an imperfect or protective uh, time, and that it is a middle passive voice of of uh, I ask. Etel means I ask or I claim or I require. And then finally it says, ara, which is therefore, it is tosimeni nazita. This is very important. So therefore, this word means to ask, okay? Na etite, to require. Na theli, to want. Na ishun, to apply. Ketalipa means etc. Okay, so it doesn't mean anything to do with actions. Ipende protasis. Okay, so he says that basically it's referring to these five claims or in modern terminology axioms. And then he says over here, Susterno get in analysis dyslexis, it is so up the side Perseus. I'm also sending you the analysis of the word it is so from the side Perseus. Thanks for the correspondence. And ime panda sti at the bottom here says I'm 
uh, always at your disposal. So he's a very uh, well-mannered, educated, kind man. Uh, in all of those things, except for educated, I'm not like him. <laughs> well, <coughs> excuse me. I'm really tired right now, but I wanted to tell you that the most important concept in mathematics is number. And these claims were assumed because to the Greeks, they were obvious. To the ancient Greeks, they were easy to derive from nothing. And, and this is the reason Euclid didn't put a definition in. And if you look at my proofs, you will be convinced that they, that they can be derived from nothing. Moreover, think to yourself that if the Greeks realized these things and they were the first, they were 2,300 years ahead of the rest of the world, which makes them a superior race. But I don't believe in that. I believe that well-formed concepts are never invented, only realized, and that eventually, if the Greeks hadn't realized these concepts, somebody else would have. Well, I'm out of breath now. So I thank you for listening to me, and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Become a subscriber, click like, and tell your friends and everybody about it so that more can learn of this wonderful knowledge. And be sure to download my free ebook. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.